Welcome to EPG Parashala. I am Professor B. Hariharan from the Institute of English, University of Kerala. The paper that we are looking at now is 20th century English literature. And the module that we are looking at today is Top Girls by Carol Churchill. Let's begin. We will start by giving you the play in a nutshell and then proceed to look at who Carol Churchill is and what she has done. Now, Top Girls is an original and daring attempt to demystify categories and questions of class and gender. Now, this is something that we do find a lot in British theatre. Now, this play is an attempt as I said earlier, that, that really interrogates class and gender for a very specific reason and that is to enable the political transformation of women. So in that sense, there is a political, certainly political dimension to this play. In the process, what the play does is to unravel the universal dilemmas that are faced by women. Now, this play is unique because it has an all-female cast and it discusses what it means to be a successful woman. And as we read the play, we would find that it focuses on some major concerns or major themes of contemporary life. Now that gives us what the play is all about, at least in a nutshell. Now let us look at the playwright, Carol Churchill. Carol Churchill is a very prominent playwright of post-war British theatre. Perhaps one of the most important post-war playwrights writing in Britain. She is a socialist, feminist writer. She is an iconoclast of modern drama. She was born in London in 1938. Now, there, there is another very interesting thing about her. She is the first female resident dramatist at the royal court. And it's not a small thing. She was influenced by pre-war surrealism. Now, surrealism is a term I'm sure we are familiar with. When you looked at the socio-cultural background in your English literature course, I'm sure you would have come across this term surrealism. So, here is this playwright who was influenced by pre-war surrealism and the post-war politics of absurdism. She has a number of plays to her credit and they all take up some topical issue or the other. In that sense, one can say that she is an activist playwright. Now, she is not an armchair activist. We will list out a few of them. You have no need to be frightened. Having a wonderful time downstairs, the ants the judge's wife, objections to sex and violence. Vinegar Tom is a very famous play. Light Shining in Buckinghamshire, Cloud Nine, Three More Sleepless Nights, Fen, A Number. A Number, incidentally, is about the whole ethical issues that come up with cloning. Blue Kettle, Drunk Enough to Say I Love You. This is a chair, Blue Heart. She has also written verse dramas. Serious Money is an example. Lives of the Great Poisoners and Hotel. Now, we need to, I think at this point, look at Churchill's art as a playwright. What kind of a playwright is she? There's a lot of stylization that you have in her plays. 
Now, if at all we look for a signature in her, it's possible to talk about signature in playwrights, the stamp, the thing that really identifies people. We, we would have certainly seen that in, let's say, the absurd playwrights, or we would see that in Bernard Shaw. Now, similarly, here, there is a signature. And what is that? It's a highly stylized conceit that she uses in all of her plays. Now, her art features in different instances. This is what she does in her plays. She uses a lot of techniques, a number of techniques, like flashbacks, twisted chronologies. There is this giant leap of logic that you have. You will have elements of absurdity, but then she is not an absurd playwright. Now, overlapping dialogue. Now, this is a very unique contribution from her. You will see this overlapping dialogue in Top Girls. And uh, when she used it in uh, Top Girls, it really was something that many playwrights later adopted it into, into their own practice. Now, overlapping dialogue is one such uh, strategy or technique that she employs. Now, different character actors playing the same character in different scenes. Now, let me repeat this. You have different characters who play the same character in different scenes. This is not something that's common at all. You will find this again very much in a number. And then you will even have songs, interjected songs, that you have songs coming in every now and then. Now, the artistic director of out of joint theatre company, the, who has also directed many of Churchill's work, would say that for this reason perhaps she is a structuralist. And he also would say that it is not just the range of subject matter, but the form which is continually surprising to critics and audiences. Now, this is very clear when we look at some of these features that I was trying to list out and identify for you. Now, I said they're all political, they respond to certain things in and uh, of what, what she has seen, things that she had seen, things in her society. So, what's her politics? There is this commitment that she has. It's an enduring commitment to a socialist and to a socialist feminist politics. Now, this combines as we have seen, with a desire to experiment with theatrical form. So, when we approach her place, we need to keep some of these things in mind. Otherwise, we will not know where we are going or what the play is trying to tell you. And her politics is a means to find a means, a theatrical means, to express her ideas about the world and her concerns for a world as she sees it, as she presents it, because she feels that the world in which we all live is damaged so much by the onslaught of global capitalism. Now, that really would underscore the kind of socialism that she is talking about. I am using the word socialism, I am not using the word Marxism. Now, when we talk about her politics, what we have to also recognize here is that her work has pioneered women's playwriting. Now, it, she is not the first woman to write plays, but then she is in some ways a pioneer in women's playwriting. She has also furthered critical and theoretical feminist activity, a second generation feminist, so to speak. That's what she is. Now, let's, after that uh, first uh, part where I talked about the overall structure of the play, let's try to have an introduction to this play. Now, Top Girls has been hailed by this great playwright Mark Raven Hill as the best play of the past 20 years. Now, Mark Raven Hill apparently 
reads this play every year. Very interesting. Now, Mark Ravenhill says that this is the best play of the past 20 years. And this has been lifted by the Guardian critic Michael Billington as the 10 best British plays of the century. And Benedict Nightingale calls this the play of the century. Now, what really marks this play is the multiple experiments in terms of style and form. As I remarked earlier, this is a play that initiated the principle of overlapping dialogue. Now, a technique that became vogue or fashionable almost, a practice in contemporary British theatre. She has used this in many of her plays. It's a very interesting thing that you have in, in, this, in, in this experiment. We do it perhaps in our everyday life. So it is something that we already, it's not something that she invented just for this play. Now, this, this play has a non-linear narrative structure. Multiple role casting has made it a very original experimental play. Now, non-linear narrative structure. Now, this is something no, no, that we would normally associate with novels. And yet, you have a play that adopts this. This is a play that offers a critique of capitalist society. It also delineates the dilemma of women in meeting the demands for personal and social change. So, this tension or as it were, the struggle, the way in which you, you bring together personal, the personal and the social in your life and the kind of problems that it has, the kind of challenges that it has for women, all that is brought out in this play. Now, she uses the elements, the formal structural elements of theatre to challenge oppression, the inevitability of oppression, so that the audience are empowered to seek change, to think. So this is a theater that, uh, this is a play that makes you think. L let's listen to what Churchill has to say about the form of theater, which she uh, shared, this idea that she shared in an interview in way back in 1989. She says, I do enjoy the form of things. I enjoy finding the form that seems best to fit what I am talking about. I don't set out to find a bizarre way of writing. I certainly don't think that you have to force it. But on the whole, I enjoy plays that are, look at that, not non-naturalistic and don't move at real time. That last part, that don't move at real time, is something that we have to keep in mind when we read a play like Top Girls. Now, I say this because we will be stuck, like all audiences, we will be stuck by the opening of this play. So, we will come to it later on when we discuss what she does in the first act of this play. Now, we will look at the kind of critical responses that this play has received, the kind of critical acclaim that she has as a playwright with reference to Top Girls. Let's look at three or four um, remarks, observations that will tell us something about the way in which the play thinks. It's a dazzling intellectual fantasia a technically brilliant circus act that flings around heavyweight intellectual conceit as if it were light as air. Now, this is what one reviewer had said about this play. Now, the, the play I said has a remarkable opening. It's a set piece. So, you have a set piece that opens this play and then it evolves into a theatrical 
shape shifter the it opens with a woman throwing a party because she has got a promotion and her name is marlene now it shows how marlene has abandoned her own daughter the dull angie who is a teenager who certainly doesn't have what it takes so she can carve out a career now um this reminds one of carol churchill herself who was married and uh, who raised three daughters a professional playwright her husband is an advocate is a lawyer now there is at, at one point she asks what is more important is it important to bring up daughters or is it important to write plays so we need to keep this also in mind now the play turns from a celebration of women's achievements to a study of what must be sacrificed for a woman to be a success in a man's world right so in a way it it really addresses a very crucial issue something that perhaps um, young couples who get married think about who debate so there is a lot of discussion that this play definitely generates the advances of one woman does not necessarily facilitate the advances of others now this is a very very important point that the play is trying to tell us we talk about people women let's say who have come up in life who enjoy executive positions but then you have a number of women who are not like that now can we then generalize here now this is a question that the play also throws up now let's look at the historical background of the play churchill committed to left wing politics lives in england in the 1980s under margaret thatcher's leadership which and that decade was a truly frightening one because social and economic in inequalities and injustices became even more harder rather than soft so those were trying times now margaret thatcher stood for everything that carol churchill opposed now what carol churchill was doing what her stance political stance spelt out very clearly a kind of confrontation confronting the contradictions that were endemic or inherent in the kind of feminism the iron lady of england embodied and the iron lady is margaret thatcher so you have a confrontation here trying to expose the kind of contradictions that were there in the kind of feminism uh upheld by margaret thatcher now the play in this context in this historical context discusses the issues and dilemmas that women encountered in the context of the election of margaret thatcher as the first lady prime minister of england so we have to read this play against such a background because it's very easy to uh, to fall into tokenism saying that look we have england has a woman prime minister it's the first woman prime minister uh, in england etc so it's very easy to say that and and then assume that women have been empowered because there is a woman prime minister now it is this hollowness that is questioned in this play now it critiques capital success over something else over sisterly solidarity sisterly solidarity now this is something we need to keep in mind as we read the play top girls is a period piece born of the social and economic transformations that the 1979 elections that brought in uh, the conservative government of margaret thatcher so it's a period piece as well 
and it certainly has uh, very strong ties to the kind of uh, realities that created it. This is a feminist play. We will see why we say this is a feminist play. This text, Top Girls, is preoccupied with the politics of reproduction and child rearing. It addresses questions like poverty, class, the rights of women and children, the meaning of success, and the dark side of capitalism. Now, these are all themes and concerns that are, in a way, interrelated. Right? And therefore, we, what the play also does is to underscore the role of class and history in marginalizing and oppressing women. Now, we would have seen this in some of the earlier plays uh, that, you, that you listen to, that you discuss. Now, uh, it also explores the connection between economics and feminism. And this is an issue that, is, that continuously emerges and is foregrounded in this play. Now, our, uh, no, those two concerns require a whole lot of attention on the part of the reader, so that you will see how these themes are discussed and developed in this play. We talked about sisterly solidarity at the thematic level. Now, what is this solidarity? We will take an instance from this play. We will look at or we will look at this idea of solidarity with reference to Marlene. The solidarity of women is a theme, it is also a problem in this play. Marlene is a career woman of the 1980s. She is a central character. Now, what she does is to remake women in her own image. Now, this is the key to Marlene's success. So, all women should be like, recreate all of them in her own image. God created man in his own image. So, you have Marlene remaking women in her own image. Now, even the women who managed to beat this patriarchal system are merely outwitting the patriarchal system. You can become smart. But then, that will not take you anywhere, because when you beat the patriarchal system, you don't reform it to make it to make it a to use a to use a cliche to make it a level playing field. There are three acts to this play. Let's look at what we have in each act. That's very briefly. We will not go into it in great detail. The first act depicts a trans-historical tableau across time, across history. Now, in this tableau, you have Marlene, this 80s career woman, hosting a dinner party for a table full of disparate women, drawn not from her society, drawn from her, drawn from history, literature, art, and mythology. Now, I will give you a um, couple of names. There is uh, uh, a Japanese woman from 12th century who sits at the table. There is a woman from Chaucer's Canterbury Tales who is at the table having her dinner. So, you have four women, four women from four different time zones, as it were, four different spaces coming here. This is uh, a scene that has, that has continued to enthrall audiences every time the play is produced. Now, it in a way is a set piece, but then it seems to work. The remaining two acts present Marlene's career and family life during the 1980s, with the last act being set a year before the previous act. The solidarity of women 
become a theme and a problem in the play so there are these are things that are discussed in the play now there are as i said historical figures in the dinner party in the first act now these historical figures can be seen as a context for marlene's success in other words what that first scene does is to is to talk about a tradition of women who were willing to take risks and they took it and made their presence felt in the world now look at what marlene is also trying to do look at what any woman would try to do to make forget women we all do that we all would like to make our presence felt in one way or the other the thing is how do you do it how does it impact others what will it do to others does it help anyone so these are the kind of issues that the opening act as it were tries to raise it asks this question to you there are these debates we have been talking about the number of debates in this play what are the debates that you have one of the things that the play underscores is that women as well as men could or might perpetuate gender inequalities now this is an issue that the play explores in the subsequent scenes set in the employment agency it's also something that's debated in the final scene of confrontation between marlene and her sister working class sister joyce now the difficulty of as i pointed out earlier the difficulty of combining work and family family life this is an unresolved problem in top girls and the play doesn't resolve it it's left open there for us to take it up and then think about it and maybe discuss this so there is this open endedness as it were like in any debate it's open ended now as i pointed out earlier let me emphasize this i think this is very very important for a play like this there is a connection a very strong connection link between economics and feminism and now this is continually at issue in this play now what about the stance that churchill has on some of these things what is the chance what is the stance that this author has taken on these things let's look at some of them very briefly Churchill links personal change of a character with larger change larger large scale societal change now what this does is to emphasize underline her belief in the ability of ordinary people to produce significant changes in themselves and their environment we can think of many women who have done this very ordinary people think of this woman in india who went around planting banyan trees think of someone like uh, the woman who led um, this campaign against a multinational company uh, soft drinks company in kerala you have many such instances the ability of ordinary people to bring change in themselves and their environment in karnataka you have this woman who used to do this now the issue is whether these women like all beneficiaries beneficiaries of capitalism have lost much in the quality of their lives even as they apparently reject economic subservience to men have they lost much as they reject the economic their economic subservience to men let let's try to then now sum up this play now as you have you you would have guessed by now that we have not done a detailed character analysis because this is not a play where we can do character analysis and the usual kind of things uh, that one would look forward to uh, in a class now this is because of the 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 radical nature of the play itself on the one hand and the kind of issues that it's trying to think with you the reader now let's try to sum up some of the things that uh, the play uh, whatever we have been trying to discuss here let's try to sum that up this is a text this is a play that reflects 
the contrast between on the one hand american feminism which celebrates the success of individualistic women and british socialist feminism which involves the collective the gain that a collective would have this is one uh, important point that emerges here another important thing to keep in mind is that this text argues for feminism where women are expected are supposed to care for the weak and the downtrodden including those in her own gender lastly the works this is this is something that would uh, sum up generally much of what churchill has done as a playwright her works uh, the works that are generated by churchill have had a lasting effect this play in particular on theatrical practices traditions gender stereotypes socio economic ideals throughout the past two decades or more till today i hope you will be able to go and take a look at this play read it do some background work some more background work on the thatcher era and then approach the play once again look at uh, the the stage look at the use of painters there's a there is a figure from a brugel painting for example who appears in the first scene so take a look at some of those paintings take a look at uh, the productions that are available online and then look at the play once again you will see the kind of theater that carol churchill um tries to promote and works with i wish you all the best thank you